My name is Glenda Walters. I am here today with a group of individuals uh, whose lives are forever linked to Lynn Haven Elementary School. I have with me today Marilyn Dutton Dykes, Tally Bloodworth, and Shirley Kilpatrick. The first public school in Lynn Haven opened January 2nd, 1912, on the second floor of the recently completed bank building located at the corner of Florida Avenue and 9th Street. The hastily prepared schoolroom welcomed 65 students that day for the first five-month term of school in the new city. Local writer and historian Jack Cutchins, also a former Lynn Haven student, is credited with much of the research in discovering the school's history. In October of that year, the city's education committee reported it is a hope of our people that more progress might be made in the way of a new school building, but circumstances are such that nothing can be done at the present. The Washington County School Board had no funds for a new school at Lynn Haven. But in November, William Lynn, the city's founder, gave the school board lots one, two, three, 18, 19, and 20 of block 126, and clearing that land began. The next spring after the creation of Bay County, the women of the community formed the school club. Their purpose, to work for a new school building. A new school board was elected in June, and work on the school began immediately. By July 5th, 1913, the second floor of the building was finished. The two-story frame schoolhouse was completed in only 92 days. As paid carpenters and volunteers hammered away, the women of the school club solicited funds far and wide. To raise the funds they needed, they staged the first Bay County Fair in September of 1913. It was a huge success and paid off the debt for the new building. On Monday, October 27, 1913, the new school building opened and 95 eager students arrived. Teaching the grades first through eight were Professor J.O. Davis, Cora Bailey, and Grace Yutze. Lynn Haven Elementary continued to grow. In 1933, the school trustees acquired from Minor Keith Properties lots 4, 5, 6, and 15 of Block 156. This block was located at the corner of Alabama Avenue between 8th and 9th Street. Later that year, the company donated Block 155 to the school for future expansion and a playground was added. During Christmas break that year, renovations of the school building began. Students would spend the early weeks of 1934 in temporary classrooms throughout the city. The renovation provided for the second story to be removed and three new classrooms added to those existing on the ground floor. After serious financial struggles, funding for the cost of the renovation, the school reopened in September of 1934. By 1938, it became apparent the school building was still not large enough to accommodate the expanding population as veterans from the Spanish-American War began to move into Lynn Haven with their families. Plans for a new building were drawn, but the bonds could not be sold and the plans were put on hold. A temporary solution was found by partitioning some classrooms and using the GAR hall for a lunch room. But as fate would have it, Lynn Haven would get its new school. May 4th, 1944 began as a happy day for Lynn Haven students. Nearly 300 of them gathered on the grounds of the school for a huge end of the year picnic. All that was left was to return the next day, say their goodbyes and pick up their report cards. But around six that afternoon, a small fire began in the school. And with a gentle Southern breeze that afternoon, the old school was quickly engulfed in flames. The 1938 plans were brought out, modified, and construction began on a new building right away. 
By September of 1945, the Lynn Haven Elementary School opened once again with a welcome by then Superintendent Merritt Brown and the introduction of the faculty by Mrs. Gertrude Bloodworth, principal. Mrs. Bloodworth's son, Tally Bloodworth, is with us this morning. Mr. Bloodworth, your mother began teaching at Lynn Haven in 1933. What year did you begin attending the school? Um, that would have been 1941. I was a, a student for Ms. Davis, who lived in Panama City, and commuted. And I can remember that there was a lot of closeness in the community and also at the school. We all pitched in to help out, and we were suffering from uh, the effects of the Second World War at, at that time. Well, a lot soon after when we got the building built, but uh, we were consumed with uh, having rummage sales to collect metal so they could build more airplanes and ammunition. Did you complete your elementary education at Lynn Haven? No, I didn't. I uh, went over to the Cove School in Panama City about the fifth grade and I graduated, in those days they let you graduate from the eighth grade, and then I went to Bay High as a freshman then. When you were at Lynn Haven and your mother was principal, was it very difficult to be the principal's son? Indeed it was. Uh, she used me to set an example on behavior, and uh, she kept that paddle going pretty well. <laughs> which I needed sorely. <laughs> Ms. Dykes, when did you begin your school career at Lynn Haven? In the fall of 1937. And you were not the only member of your family, we understand, who attended. How mm -hmm. many brothers and sisters did you have I here? Had, I had one sister who was older and three brothers who were younger. Did all of them attend Lynn Haven? Yes, they did. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about what you remember of your early years. Uh, the, the very first grades. Uh, Mrs. Lillian Phelps was first grade teacher. Uh, I remember that she spoke a little bit loud, but quite clear, and uh, everybody loved her. And then second grade, I went to the library over on Ohio Avenue in a back room, and Miss Elizabeth Dolphin was second grade teacher. Uh, after the school burned, uh, we started out in eighth grade in the city hall, but that really didn't work, and so they moved the eighth grade to the Masonic Hall upstairs. Uh, the seventh grade was already in the downstairs of that building, <laughs> and Mr. R.D. Chambliss was principal, and uh, everything was after the war. There were big buildings here, and uh, of course, I don't really know when they were torn down, but they, they had built many big buildings. <coughs> and, uh, it was all good. That's good, that's good. So you have many happy uh, memories of your days here. All of it was good. Uh, we also have with us today Shirley Kilpatrick. Now she has the unique distinction of having been a student, a teacher, and retiring as librarian of Lynn Haven Elementary. As a student, describe some of your school activities. Uh, well, as Marilyn said, we played with our friends. We walked to school with our friends. Uh, one of the biggest events I can remember in school was going to, uh, on a field trip to the Navy base. I mean, my mother went along, my little brothers and sisters went along, and I mean, that was a, that was a really big event. Uh, occasionally there would be a movie that was uh, brought by a sponsor here, and uh, a movie was a big event. A really big event. <laughs> uh, the I don't remember a lot about the PE, so I'm not even sure if we had a PE teacher at that time. I think the the teachers actually went out with us for PE, but by the time I came as a teacher, we had a part-time PE teacher that we shared with uh, Highland Park, 
and they the teacher would come to Lynn Haven like two days a week one semester and to Highland Park three days and then the next semester they would swap and on those days that uh, a PE teacher was not here, then the classroom teacher had to take the children out for PE. So, uh, you know, the teachers go out, sit in the dugouts because there were baseball dugouts on the field by then because Little League played here. What year did you start uh, attending Lynn Hay? Uh, I began uh, attending here in third grade. I had begun school in uh, Drummond Park. Mm -hmm. and so I went first and second grade, and then my family moved to Lynn Haven, and I started third grade here. And I went to fourth grade, I skipped fifth grade, I was a sixth grader here. So that was, that was my three years Those here. Three years here. Yeah. How many brothers and sisters have, did you have attend the school? <laughs> well, there's seven children in my family. I'm the oldest of seven. And um, actually, by the time I began teaching here, I actually was teaching my brothers and sisters here. So I, I actually have uh, four sisters and two brothers that attended here. Another unique experience. <laughs> yeah. So you left Lynn Haven, went to school, became a teacher, came back to Lynn Haven. How many different principals did you work for? Um, I think four. Let's see, Mr. Neal, Tom Neal, mm -hmm. uh, and I worked for him probably the longest. Uh, I worked for Charlie Dial, Alan Comerford, um, Lee Stafford. So that, I think that's basically the ones that I work for. I see. Well, during your uh, time here, there were additions made to the school and quite a bit of that 1945 arrangement was changed. Can you tell us something about how the building was configured then as compared to now? Uh, when I started here, the main building was the, the main hall and the entry. Mm -hmm. which is no longer used as the entry, and the hallway that came down, which attaches to the office now. And that, at one time, had been the eighth grade classrooms. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the office was added on. When I started to teach here in 62, uh, the wings that are adjacent to this building were, were new, mm -hmm. and sixth graders were in those. And then in 75, uh, they came in and branched over f between those two wings and created the library. And then uh, before that, the down where the kindergartens, the kindergartens were added on, we had portable kindergartens mm -hmm. for a while, uh, down where the second and first grade wings are, all that's new. At one time, um, the cafeteria had been in the main building and then the cafeteria was changed and added on and the, caf the original cafeteria was made into a multi-purpose room and music room and art room. Uh, so lots of, there's, there's always been building going on here, and we've always had lots of temporary buildings that we always had classrooms in. Uh, some of those temporary buildings have been built, condemned, had to be used again, so, you know, we've always had an overflow of people here, and we've had, um, our enrollment has been up over 900 several times. Shirley, would, do you describe to me what your uh, first classroom was like here at Lynn Haven? Okay, my first classroom was uh, on the end of the, the main old wing, and it was right next to the boiler room, but it was really nice in the wintertime <laughs> because the, the heat just radiated through that wall, so we, we were always warm in there. Um, we had big walls of windows. We had one electrical outlet in the front of the classroom, and one of those uh, outlets, uh, you know, we had a double outlet, actually. But one of those was always taken up by your clock because schools run on clocks. <laughs> and uh, so you had to have an electric clock running. And then with your other plug, you could actually choose. If it was summertime, you might have a fan plugged in there. Uh, if you had to show a film strip though, you had to take your fan out and put your film strip projector in because that was the only extra plug that you had. So the day that we actually got two plugs in our classroom, one in the front and one in the back, was like a day of celebration because you finally had some plugs that you could run multiple electrical appliances at the same time and still have a fan and still have a movie going. And when did you get air conditioning? Uh, -uh no air conditioning. By the time I left here at like 3.15 in the afternoon, I went directly home and took a shower. Tell us a little bit about communication. It's very necessary for you to uh, 
respond to the office or to know what's going on in other classrooms. How was that handled? Uh, well, we actually did have a PA system uh, the entire time I was here. I can't remember any time when there wasn't a, P, a PA system, but it wasn't used a lot. You know, uh, I don't remember morning announcements. I guess if there was an emergency, somebody would come on and say something. Um, we didn't have any TVs, no radios that were connected to the school. And usually if somebody went home for lunch and heard something on the radio, or you know there was a big catastrophe then somebody would come back to school or some parent would come to school you know to let everybody know and um, it was kind of a subtle way to get information but nevertheless that's the way it was can you particularly remember some information that came to the school that way uh, President Kennedy was shot and the way the school found out was students that went home for lunch that day came back telling about hearing it on the radio. And I particularly found out by, I was standing in the hallway outside the lunchroom door with my probably 35 sixth graders. And somebody came in the hallway and told us at that time. And then things just kind of went downhill after that announcement was made. So we knew something really bad was going on. It's because of the dedication of a teacher to her students and to her school. As Shirley has described, that's the kind of dedication that I've seen at uh, Lynn Haven through the years, and that's the kind of dedication that has made this one of the finest community schools. We're so happy that Mrs. Deitz, Mr. Bloodworth, and Ms. Kilpatrick were with us to talk today. And I know they all want to join with me in saying, Happy 100th Lynn Haven Elementary.